we should do like Psych 101. I only ever took a Psych 101 class. In all the classes and everything that I ever did in my entire life, I think that that little AP Psych class that I took in high school was probably the best information I've gotten about anything ever in my entire life ever. Like, oh my God, dude. I think every single person, if you're going into college or if you're in college now and you need to take an elective, a Psych 101 class will be the best class that you take in your entire life out of anything. Oh my God, dude. The human mind is so powerful in some ways and so fucking limited in other ways. It like blows your mind. You just, you learn things that you like, that are just fucking crazy things, dude. I don't know. What did you get on the AP psych exam? <laughs> I couldn't take it. I got kicked out of the class because my parents didn't have the money to pay for the fucking exam. It was so embarrassing. It was only $70 too. I missed a few, I missed a few AP exams because my parents didn't have the money to pay for the tests. It sucks too because I, if I, I only needed a few more credits to go into college as a sophomore, but um, I think that if I would have gotten to take the AP exams I missed, I might have had enough to do it. Rip. That whole class was like a waste, but that wasn't really right. I, I enjoy what I learned. My favorite thing about psychology is the thing where kids think more is bigger. Like if you have one liter of water in a wide cup and one liter in a tall cup, the kids will always say the tall cup has more. Oh, that's interesting. There are so many interesting things in psych. Did you, like, here's an, like, I can give you so many interesting factoids that came out of that class. Here's an interesting thing. Did you know that, um, <clears throat> did you know that, um, you probably can't name every single book and every single movie and every single TV show and every single game that you've ever played? If I were to ask you to put that list together, you'd probably be missing a ton of things, right? You would be, right? There's no way you could name every single thing, right? But... If I were to ask you about any of those particular things, have you ever played X game? You would know the answer instantly, right? Because of the way that your mind organizes information. It isn't like a bookshelf or a file system, right? I don't know. That kind of shit is really interesting. Yeah, like you say no shit, but I could ask you about any game you've ever played or any movie you've ever watched or any book you've ever read, and you would be able to recall it instantly, right? Like... Did you know that you had played um, like, uh, like Sarge's Heroes on the Nintendo 64? Like if I were to ask you to list every N64 game you played, would you be able to list like the Army Men game? Like maybe or maybe not if you hadn't played it. But if, if I asked you, have you played the Army Men Sarge's Heroes for Nintendo 64? If you played it, you'd be like, oh shit, yeah. Yeah, I remember that game, right? You'd know it instantly, right? Um, there's shit like that. Did you know that like, here's a really interesting thing. You have different types of memory, short-term memory and long-term memory. And the way that you commit things to memory is very interesting too, right? The process of sleeping is where you commit a lot of learned patterns into long-term memory, um, where you uh, codify it is the term they always use, right? Um, and people with damages to their short-term or long-term memory, these manifest in really weird ways. Did you know that if you sit in front of a projector, right? This is very interesting, okay? If you sit in front of a projector and the teacher flashes something on the projector, nine words real fast, and then gets rid of it, like in less than like half a second, and and then has you write it down immediately after, you can recall a surprising amount of what's written down, more than you would ever think possible, right? It flashes on the wall and goes away, and then you get to write immediately. You can recall, like, of those nine things, like, five, six of them. Like, it's crazy. You never would have think you'd be able to do it, right? But if the teacher flashes it and then makes you wait five to ten seconds before writing, you've got, like, two things at the most. It's, like, a totally different thing, right? Um... Yeah, that's like crazy shit, right? It's stuff that you never really think about, like, the difference between, um, short-term and long-term memory, and... The way that stuff plays out like this, and that's not even long-term memory. That's a different. That's a different type of like. Uh, that's a different type of memory because I don't think long-term memory is considered until um. Th there is another term for it. I don't remember if it's if it's memory codified in sleep or what. But there's even like a different thing for it. Um, there is a um. Um, oh, this is really interesting because of the way that it plays out, um, because of the way that that plays out like in eyewitness things, right? If, if a dramatic event happens really quickly and something violent happens, right? People see these things in a fraction of a second. They don't write it down immediately. And then when they go to recall it later, they can have like totally different information based on what actually happened, you know? Um, yeah, that's fucking crazy shit. It's like L2 cash versus RAM. Yeah, a little bit. Um, oh, another crazy thing, right? If the teacher gives you a list of 20 words to memorize, I think I've said this on stream before, right? Gives you a list of 20 words to memorize, no relation to one another, and then you have five minutes to remember it or a minute to remember it, right? And then you, um, and then they give you a piece of paper and they tell you to write these 20 words down, right? Maybe you'll remember like, you know, 10, 10, 11, 12, whatever, however many, however good your memory is, right? You're able to do it, right? If a teacher gives you a list of words and then pairs them, with a list of totally unrelated words, totally unrelated, they have no, so maybe like orange, um, happy, or car, um, 
blue or something like, that. like totally unrelated words right or um or, or you know like um cat run right and then they give you a piece of paper and they give you i think they call these hook words and then they give you that list of words here that had nothing to do with that you can recall almost every single word right it's crazy shit um And that's not even going into the. Um, that's not even going into like more more advanced things, um, right? When you get into things like the um, like the uh, the Stanford Prison Study, right? How any random person has the capacity to become this ruthless dictator that is like torturing people and inventing ways to like humiliate and torture people, normal citizens that know they're part of an experiment, that know, that all know they're right, and the mental breakdowns that prisoners have, knowing they're just part of an experiment, they all know that it's not even real, and they still go through all of these crazy processes, these. Crazy crazy transformative things that cause these police officers to become crazy people and these prisoners to, to like just like mind boggling shit or the um, or the was it is it the is the Milgram experiment um, is this the one with the shocks the um, yeah obedience to an authority figure where like 90% of innocent well-meaning good people um, will push a button to deliver lethal voltage to somebody on the other end of a wall because an authority figure is telling them that they need to do it how many people will go through and do it that shit is crazy right um, What do you think of the Stanford experiment being headed by the guy conducting it? He participated as your leader. Uh, I, I love him, dude. I, I might be biased. I love the Zimbardo guy, dude. I think he's an amazing fucking person. We had um, the textbook that we... I'm totally biased. We had a textbook in our um, AP Psych class that was written by him. Um, he's the one that did the textbook. I, he's the one that was the head of, the, um, the head of that Stanford prison experiment. But, like, um, I don't know. I really like this dude. I, he's a smart guy. I think he's really smart. I think he speaks really well. Um, he's entertaining, like... Um, I'm pretty sure that study's been heavily criticized. I've heard of people saying that the Stanford um, study may have been compromised by... Um, I'm pretty sure that study's been heavily criticized. I've heard of people saying that the Stanford um, study may have been compromised by different things, but it was repeated a few times before these kinds of studies became unethical, right? Um, where they were getting similar results based on what was... The only thing I kind of disagreed with you was that I think that financial factors are huge for middle class families when deciding to have more children. I don't, I don't know if I agree with that. I don't know. I would have to see more polling or something. It just doesn't feel right to me that like somebody's like, I really want to have two kids or three kids. Like you never hear. I've never heard. I know that's anecdotal, right? I really want to have three kids, but I can only afford one or two. Like I don't know that. Uh, I'm not sure. Yeah, the Milgram experiment. I haven't heard people criticize the Milgram experiment. Yeah, psychology is held back a lot by ethical. Sure. Um, these are originals, but I mean, this has been ex this this experiment has been repeated a ton. I think I don't know why they're allowed to do this one, um, because this involves misleading people. If you have an income of forty five k, you can't afford more than two kids. I may sound pedantic, but forty five k means nothing. In what city? Like, I don't know. I mean, like my biggest argument against that is um, why why do rich people have so few children? Um, and why do poor people have so many children? It seems like there's something more going on here than people can or can't afford them. I don't know if I believe that. I guess I asked a leading question. I don't know. Oh, you're allowed to mislead people as long as you tell them what the experiment is at the end? Oh, gotcha. Oh, yeah, that's true. Because most because in order for placebos and everything to work, you would have to be some level of deception. You're right, my bad. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Fuck. I remember reading this in the Zimbardo book. If somebody could find me these exact numbers, I'd be really interested, right? Here's the final thing I'll, I'll talk about, right? I'm only encouraging you to take a psych class. It's so interesting, dude. Your life will be enriched for it, and it'll be the best class you've ever taken, unless you've taken, like, a really, really cool class that I never got to take, right? This will be the funnest class you've ever taken, okay? Um, these are, are these called reinforcement schedules? I, I forget what these are called, but you can, um, you can reward somebody based on the time or the number of, oh wait, hold on. Let me, I gotta remember this. You can reward somebody based on a set amount of time. You can reward somebody based on a random amount of time. You can um, reward somebody based on a set amount of actions, or you can reward, reward somebody based on a random amount of actions, okay? Pay attention, this is really, really, really cool, okay? But I don't remember the exact numbers, so it's a little bit less cool, right? So um, they had an experiment where they took a pigeon, okay? They took a pigeon, and um, the pigeon gets to poke something, I think. Yeah, I think B.F. Skinner was the one that started this shit. Um, they, they took um, 
Oh, yeah, because I think this is the definition of a Skinner box, right? Well, AKA every single current MMORPG. Um, you took a pigeon and you, um, and you pick, 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 right? And every time the pigeon picks, it, we, we're going to play a game, okay? So, and the first thing, the, the, I think the question of this research was how long does it take to break somebody out of a behavior, right? So they had one thing where when the pigeon picked, right, after five or 10 seconds, every single time, a pellet of food would come down, right? So he picks, five seconds later, uh, food comes down, right? Well, what happened was when they removed the st uh, stimulus, when they removed the stimulus or the reward, I don't know, I don't think those words are interchangeable. When they removed the reward, um, after the bird picked, after five, 10, 15, 20 seconds, he stopped picking, right? So the, the, like, so you would get somebody to pick for like, um, I, I think it was like 15 seconds, right? Past the point, right? That's how quote unquote addicted they were to the behavior, right? Um, for the random time where they pick and then there's a random like five to 15 second time afterwards, after they picked, um, there was a random amount of time. They were able to get the bird to keep picking for like, um, I don't think they measured it in seconds. I think they measured it in like number of picks. Um, but I'll, I'll just put time here or whatever, right? They were able to get this bird to pick for like another like 30 or 40 seconds, right? It, it was a longer time because of the randomness because you didn't know exactly when it would come, right? It would, it would be more than this over here to the left. Um, and then they switched to rewarding based on the action, right? Um, and there is one where like if you picked like five times, right? Every five picks would give you some type of reward, right, with your bird. Pecks, not picks, right? What they found was that after they took away the reward, that you would get this person to peck maybe another, you know, like 10 or 15 times, right? So maybe 10 or 15 more actions out of the person um, when they'd peck in order to get the reward, right? On the random one where you peck a random amount of times and then you get a reward, when they removed the reward from this, they were able to get the birds to peck like 1,000 plus times in order to try to get another reward. Like, it was insane how many more times the bird would peck, hoping to get a reward using this reinforcement schedule. Um, and this kind of, this kind of reward system, the, the ideology, not the ideology, the theory and the concept behind this type of reward schedule is how casinos work. Right? This is exactly how a casino works. You walk into a casino, you pull a lever, and based on a random number of actions, you don't know how many, you are rewarded, right? And you can get people into pulling that lever over and over and over again, thinking that the next pull is going to be the reward, right? And this is what all of slot machine theory is based on. Um, and a lot of people also argue that a lot of MMORPGs are based on this as well. You kill a monster over and over and over again after a random amount of times. I mean, it's statistic probability, right? You'll be rewarded with something as well, right? This is why people, when people, oh, so I guess now you know, right? When people say that modern MMORPGs are Skinner boxes, um, this is what they're talking about, right? Putting you in a Skinner box, having you perform some action for some random amount of time, and then spitting a reward out as a result. Um, Yeah, that's, um, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll stop my spiel now. Listen, this shit is so fucking interesting. Take a Psych 101 class if you have the opportunity to. It's like the coolest shit you'll ever learn in your life. And it's cool because the most important part of a cognitive bias isn't erasing it because you can never get rid of your cognitive biases. These things have been baked into your head over the course of hundreds of thousands of years. The important part is to just be cognizant of it. You have to be aware of your own cognitive biases so that you don't fall into the trap of being Lauren Southern where you go to a city and you talk to 20 people and you think that somehow you now have a representative opinion of every single person living there. Don't let yourself fall into those traps, right? You have to, you have to be aware of your cognitive biases. What is this? Okay, well, watch this one thing. The ASH experiment is one of psychology's oldest and most popular pieces of research. A volunteer is told that he's taking part in a visual perception test. What he doesn't know is that the other participants are actors and he's the only person taking part in the real test uh -oh. which is actually about oh does this does this influence what his answers are based on what the uh, people in class say i think i've heard of this i'm sorry i might have spoiled it well i might be totally wrong my bad in the real test which is actually about group conformity please begin the experiment you will be taking part in today involves the perception of line length your task will be simply to look at the line here on the left and indicate which of the three lines on the right is equal to it in length. So, for example, if you the actors have been told to match the wrong lines. The volunteer will be monitored to see if he gives the correct answer or if he goes along with the opinion of the group and gives the wrong answer. In the first test, the correct answer is to uh, one. 
one. One. Two. One. Once again, the correct answer is two. Three. 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 The ash experiment has been repeated many times, and the results have been uh, supported again and again. We will conform to the group. Again, we're very social creatures. We're very much aware of what the people around us think. Uh, we want to be liked, we don't want to be seen to rock the boat, so we will go along with the group, even if we don't believe what people are saying. This kind of idea has been supported again and 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 again all throughout all of psychology. Everybody is supportive of this. This is one of the reasons why, in my debate, this was one of the reasons why I got so fucking mad at Sargon of Akkad, and I, and I couldn't breach him, and he kept saying things like, and laughing at me, where he was saying things like, don't you, so you don't believe that people have agency? No, of course not. No, we exist as social creatures. And even a cursory look at the evidence available in psychology will not only like, will resoundingly reaffirm what I'm saying. It's not even controversial that people are oftentimes very much a victim of circumstance, a product of their environment, right? That was the whole point of Metal Gear Solid 2, to show you that Raiden could turn into Solid Snake if you put him up in the correct environment, right? We even play video games that tell us this shit. But, um... Yeah, this is all stuff that, like, psychology tells you a million different ways that people will conform, um, that pr environments will have dramatic impacts on how people think, right? This is all stuff that's really well understood, but we still act like, in society, like nobody's ever heard of this shit. I don't know. We'll still go along. One. 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 Group dynamics is one of the most powerful forces in human psychology. Uh, one. To answer that question, we set up a hidden camera experiment to see if this woman would stand up at the sound of this tone simply because everyone else is. You might be <laughs> thinking you'd never go along with this. Or would you? After just three beeps, and without knowing why she's doing it, this woman is now conforming perfectly to the group. But what happens if we take the group away? Elaine, please. Okay, now she's alone, the crowd is gone, and nobody is watching her, except our hidden cameras. What do you think she'll do? She's now conforming to the rules of the group without them even being there. Now, watch like, what happens- Oh my god, dude. This kind of stuff. Come on, dude. This is the same, somebody in chat said it. This is the same as the monkeys in the ladder experiment. Dude, this kind of stuff speaks to you so much of like the human condition. How does the human mind work? How do we learn behaviors? How are behaviors conditioned in society, right? This kind of shit is backed up by so much. We should, dude, I wanna do it. We should fucking do like two weeks of streams on like Psych 101 shit, right? How are behaviors learned in society, right? Why do people do the things they do? Why do circle jerks exist? Why is it that when everybody gets together in a group and they start making fun of somebody, that one guy, you know, might not like it, but laughs nervously and eventually goes along with it right why do you get like all of these social phenomenon that we that we uh that we witness right in society have all been explained to some extent by these really really basic things in psych right everything that we've talked about here today this is all stuff that you will get like in your first week of a psych 101 class this is all really 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 basic shit right it's like super ultra basic shit and i already know how this is going to end spoiler alert she's about to teach a whole new set of people this behavior when we introduce another outsider who doesn't know the rules. Have a seat and they'll be out in just a couple minutes. Great, thanks. thanks so much. Everybody. 
it was doing, so I thought I was supposed to. Think she'll teach the new guy what to do? We kept the cameras rolling as more unsuspecting patients arrived. No, no, look, people in chat are saying this is so acted out, right? I, I'm pretty sure this is a real experiment. I don't think this is a meme. Uh, if somebody has a psych degree, you can back me up from right or wrong, right? But I believe that the um, this experiment was first done with, um, you have, so what you do is you have five monkeys in a room, you put a banana at like the top of the ladder, right? And what you do is anytime a monkey tries to climb the ladder, you shock the monkeys, right? So that they pull, they don't allow people to do it, right? So eventually nobody goes up the ladder um, for the banana, right? What you do is you pull one monkey out and you add one new monkey in, okay? When that new monkey gets in and he goes up the ladder, all the other monkeys pull him down. He's like, fuck off. We don't want to get shocked, right? Then you pull out a second monkey and you replace it with a new monkey, right? And as soon as all the monkey, as soon as the new monkey goes in, all the monkeys pull him down, right? You repeat this until you've replaced every single monkey, all right? You've got four brand new monkeys in there and you bring in another brand new one. When he tries to go up the ladder, all of the monkeys pull them out. Oh, got hit with water, not shocked. I'm sorry. Yeah, sprayed or whatever, right? As soon as that monkey goes up, all the other monkeys pull them down, even though these monkeys have not witnessed the punishment, even though none of the new monkeys had witnessed the punishment for climbing the ladder and didn't even know there was a negative thing associated with it. It was a social learned behavior, right? Like it was water, not uh, not electric shock, sorry, right? <clears throat> And slowly but surely, What began as a random rule for this woman has now become the social norm for everyone in this waiting room. Here to explain what's going on in their brains is Jonah. Destiny, what is your point though? My point is that sometimes it's possible that we can learn behaviors without ever even questioning why they do it, right? There's so many different implications um, for, for, for everything, every belief that you have. Um, why do women shave their legs, right? Well, if you're a woman and you grow up in society today, all women shave their legs. They just do. It's just a thing you do, right? You don't question that. You just do, right? But do women really need to shave their legs? What about blonde women that have really fine hair and it doesn't even really grow that much? Do they really need to shave their legs, right? But it's not really something you think about or question. Basically, uh, in terms of social conditioning, and that's just one example out of 50 million, right? In terms of social conditioning, you have a lot of things that you believe in or that you know to be true, but you've never really thought about them before. They're just social learned behaviors um, that you just kind of, you know, assume that this is what people do and that's why we do it and like you just kind of go along with it without ever really thinking about it you know a burger of the university of pennsylvania this sort of internalized form of herd behavior is part of what we call social learning starting at a very early age when we see members of our group perform a task our brains literally reward us for following in their footsteps when i saw everybody stand up i felt like i needed to join them otherwise i'm like excluded once i decided to go with it then i felt much more comfortable. I don't know about this experiment of the Ashk. Ashk? Is that how it's pronounced? Has been um, repeated successfully. Yeah, I know the I know that one has been for sure. Where people give incorrect answers based on group conformity. Yeah. Is it because people like to be a part of something? Like it's kind of reassuring? Yes, yes, of course. Yes, people love to be included. Whatever you think a, whatever you think a group opinion is, right? Whatever you think a group opinion is, that is something that you're more likely to be comfortable with, right? If I were to ask the average male viewer in here right now to try a tablespoon of their own fucking semen, right? Everybody in chat right now is like, oh my God, that's so gay, that's disgusting, blah, 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 right? On and on and on, right? About horrible is, right? And a, but one of the major reasons you do that is because you're like, you You ever see people when, before they have a reaction to something, they look to the guy next to them like, wow, this is really fucking gay, right? Like you do that kind of shit, right? Well, it's like, is it really that gay? Because I guarantee you that over half of the people that watch my stream probably chew their fingernails or their fingers and your hands are infinitely more fucking disgusting than any fluid that's coming out of your body, right? But you, but you don't really think about that, right? Like, oh, you know, like, oh, you know, sitting here, like, eating my fucking fingernails and chewing my skin off my hands is, you know, that's just whatever, it's a habit. Nobody judges me for it, whatever. But, like, eating cum? Oh, no, that's so fucking gross. Right, dude? Right, right, right? And it's like, well, does it really make sense? Like, no, these are social learned behaviors, you know? I actually wash my hands 
It doesn't matter, dog. It doesn't matter how much you wash your hands. Your hands are filthy, dude. The hands are probably the dirtiest part of the human body. Like, your hands are very fucking dirty. Say for maybe, what, like, maybe your mouth or whatever, whatever interacts with food the most. Or this is why, like, this is also why a lot of, like, um, like, anytime you ask a question, sexuality is a really, really good one. Because that's when you see, like, a ton of the insecurities come out. Whenever you talk about, like, sexuality-related things, you get a lot of that head turn. Like, oh, that's so, that's so gay, right? That's so gay, right? Like, if somebody's like, dude, like, Jamie is the fucking hottest fucking actor in Game of Thrones, like, bar none, or not Jamie, but whoever plays Jamie Lannister, that dude is hot as fuck, right? And you're like, with a friend, you're like, oh, dude, that's so gay, right? That's so gay, right? Like, right? When you do that head turn thing to make sure that, right? Why are you doing that? You're doing that because, like, other people, right? You have to make sure that your opinion is syn synergized with the group, right? Because you're looking for acceptance with a lot of those opinions, right? This is where a lot of group think comes from. This is why people have a hard time forming opinions on their own. They don't want to say something that causes them to stand out too much, right? Because you never want to be the guy picked out as having the odd opinion. You don't want to be the awkward one or the odd one. Like, what do you mean you think that thing? Nobody else thinks that thing. That's kind of fucking weird, dude, right? Like... <clears throat> This video kind of presents the behavior as a bad thing, but there are probably very good evolutionary reasons for it. Yes, the whole world of evolutionary biology and all of, the, and all of that psych, all of that most likely, I'm not educated in this area, right? But from what I remember studying, right? Can generally be traced back to things that um, can generally be traced back to things where like this sort of behavior probably exists because of this, right? This sort of behavior probably exists because of this, right? Um, yeah, sure. Like, there, at some point in time, being able to pick up on social cues and integrating with groups very quickly is probably very important to your survival. You don't want to be the odd one out. You want to be included in a group. You want to have some type of structure to protect you, right? Yeah, these things are very, very, very important. Um, but but you but keep in mind that we live in society today, and things are very different, right? You know, not not um, a lot of what we do has to be um, rejecting. Um, rejecting what evolutionarily you are trained to do. Evolution hasn't given you the tool set to, um, to exist in society today. A lot of society is overcoming these things that evolution has given us. Um, even for basic things, right? Um, when you learn to fight, right? A lot of fighting is initially overriding um, things that are evolutionary to you, right? What is the evolutionary response to, to getting hit, right? Cover your face and turn your back. Right? Have you ever seen the first time a big guy steps into a boxing ring and he gets hit in the face and he does that thing and then he turns his back? You fucking done, dude. You can't fucking turn your back on the dude. You're just gonna get fucking annihilated, right? And it happens. Um, I think I can't even find a gif. Um, I think some dude. Yeah, I think this guy. I th I think he's um. Oh, is he a professional boxer? Uh, he does it here. Um. Where he's doing this thing where like he turns his back to the dude. Why would you, why would you do this? Right? But like you can find a lot self. of this like in, in different videos and whatnot, right? Where like your your evolutionary response is to like you know like turn your back and cover your face, but that doesn't work in a fight, right? Like that's a behavior that you have to override, right? Or you can learn to take all the punches to your face. I guess like Ronda can. Have you seen two monkeys paid unequally? <gasps> oh, this is awesome. God, there is so much cool shit here, guys. Seriously, take a fucking take a class in this shit. Um, so a final experiment that I want to mention to you is our fairness study. Uh, and so this, this, this became a very famous study and there's now many more because after we did this about 10 years ago, uh, it became... A professional boxer wouldn't do that. They practice good other behavior. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah, of course. You, you'll never see in the boxing ring, no one's ever turning their back, right? Because you're fucking donezo at that point. Very well known. <laughs> and we did that originally with capuchin monkeys. And uh, I'm going to show you the first experiment that we did. It has now been done with dogs and with birds and with chimpanzees, um, with, but with Sarah Brosnan, we started out with capuchin monkeys. So what we did is we put two capuchin monkeys side by side. Again, these animals, they live in a group. They know each other. We take them out of the group, put them in a test chamber. And there's a very simple task that they need to do. And if you give both of them cucumber for the task, the two monkeys side by side, they're perfectly willing to do this 25 times in a row. So cucumber, even though it's really only water in my opinion, but cucumber <laughs> is perfectly fine for them. Now if you give the partner grapes, the, the food preferences of my capuchin monkeys correspond exactly with the prices in the supermarket. And so if you give them grapes, it's a far better food, uh, then you create inequity between them. So that's the experiment we did. Recently we videotaped it with new monkeys who had never done the task, uh, thinking that maybe they would have a stronger reaction and that turned out to be right. The one on the left, is the monkey who gets cucumber. The one on the right is the one who gets grapes. The one who gets cucumber, note that the first piece of cucumber is perfectly fine. The first piece she eats. Uh, then she sees the other one getting grape and you will see what happens. 
So she gives a rock to us, that's the task, and we give her a piece of cucumber and she eats it. The other one needs to give a rock to us, and that's what she does. And she gets a grape, and she eats it. The other one sees that. She gives a rock to us now, gets again cucumber. She tests the rock now against the wall. She needs to give it to us. And she gets cucumber again. <laughs> so this is basically the Wall Street protest that you see here. Um. What was the name of the... Oh. These experiments... Listen, everything... I'm not just ranting about random shit, okay? All of this ties together, okay? All of this ties together. Basically, the big claim that Borjas makes in this article is that we need to recognize the reality of the situation, right? Which is that immigration can harm certain people and immigration can help certain people. These are undeniable facts. Only once we realize this situation can we have a reasonable expect or can we have a reasonable conversation about policy, right? It's like the biggest right when I read this right, that was like his biggest argument, right? And I and I make the same argument for a lot of social issues. That only once you realize how people operate at a fundamental level, right? Like you can't be making these absurd claims like all black people just need to pull themselves up by their bootstraps and stop doing this thing. Or all Muslim people just need to stop being so violent. Or all these, or like, you know, like, you have to understand that people don't work like that, right? They're, they're, people act and respond in predictable ways based on external stimuli. And if you put them in a certain scenario, they're always going to come out, or, or statistically speaking, the other way, right? Uh, at the other end, a certain way, you know? Um, yeah, I don't know. <clears throat> Um, oh, someone in chat mentioned this. I remember learning about this as well. Um, this is why surveys are often not used useful because the person will answer whenever they believe they, whatever they believe they should answer, what the group will answer, not what they actually think. I've heard that excuse given um, for some pollsters about why Trump um, overperformed or outperformed some of the polling in some of his states. That there were people saying that maybe they gave an answer to the poll that they didn't actually believe in because they thought that that's the one they should give. I don't know any like big studies offhand. I remember learning about that in psych class, but I don't remember if I don't remember the actual reason for that. But um, what percentage of people do you think the standing up test would work on? I'd predict definitely less than fifty percent, over fifty percent, easy. I would say definitely. Social conditioning is a very, 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 very important part of it's. It's so important to who you are. It's so important to to you as a as a social creature. Well, to you, not to me, because I'm better than you fuckers. Um. That's why I'm the one streaming, right? No, I'm just kidding. Um, but even me to some extent, right? But social conditioning is like very, 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 very important. It comes to the clothes that you wear, the shoes that you wear, the phone that you use, the ringtone you use, um, the car that you drive, the, the, the upholstery in your car. Every single decision you make is constantly clouded with what will other people think about me if I do this thing, right? If I wear this blue coat, um, you know, in Seattle, are people going to make fun of me for wearing it? Um, you know, if I give my guy friend a hug, are people going to think I'm being gay? Um, you know, like if I do this one thing, what are people like these things, these thoughts are constantly, um, plaguing your mind. I say plaguing, but they're not necessarily always negative, right? Um, I'm only giving you the negative end of it, right? Well, what'll happen if I steal from this grocer? You know, somebody will, you know, look, somebody will catch me or, you know, it's legal. I shouldn't do it. What'll happen if I walk out of the self checkout aisle and I steal a few things like, I don't know what's wrong. Maybe someone will notice, you know, no one will probably notice you can probably shoplift a lot more than you're gonna win right like um like i'm not saying that it's always a negative thing um but <clears throat> um fuck i kind of want to want to watch a quick thing on the milgram experiment now because a lot of people believe that um not many people would fall into these traps but it's just not true on the milgram experiment wasn't it wasn't it n how many people went i want to say it was 80 percent plus how many people went all the way milgram How many people went through the experiment um, 
an innocent teacher. Teachers were instructed to treat silence as an incorrect answer and apply. Okay, for, so these were for teachers. At some point, the actor, blah, 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 blah. What do you think was the average voltage given by teachers before they refused to administer further shocks? So these were people already in positions of authority. The, the highest shock of 450 volts was 65% went to the maximum voltage level. That's not even how many people bailed like a shock or two beforehand, right? <clears throat> Wikipedia said 60 to 70% depending on which incident. Sure, okay. So, I mean, it's still like a really high... And they, and, these is, and this is only going to the maximum shock too, not how far... Um, <clears throat> do we want to... Under the guise of a motivational seminar... Actually, we could... I think we can... Is this the classic? Oh, they were teachers in that scenario, not by profession. I'm sorry, my bad. So those might have just been total normie people, not teachers by profession. My bad. Can you explain the test? Um, here, I'll, I'll give it to you. My bad. When I learn of incidents such as the massacre of millions of men, women, and children perpetrated by the Nazis in World War II, how is it possible, I ask myself, that ordinary people who are courteous and decent in everyday life can act callously, inhumanely, without any limitations of conscience? Now, there are some studies in my discipline, social psychology, that seem to provide a clue to this question. I the problem I wanted to study was a little different, it went a little bit further. It was the issue of authority. Under what conditions would a person obey authority who commanded actions that went against conscience? These are exactly the questions that I wanted to investigate at Yale University. It is May 1962. An experiment is being conducted in the Elegant Interaction Laboratory at Yale University. The subjects are 40 males between the ages of 20 and 50 residing in the greater New Haven area. Psychologists have developed several theories to explain how people learn. One theory is that people learn things correctly whenever they get punished for making a mistake. Forty years later, Milgram's infamous experiment, Obedience, is still taught in classrooms around the world. All right, teacher, would you take the test and be seated in front of the shock generator, please, in the next room? But the experiment was rigged. The victim was an accomplice of the experiment. The victim, according to plan, provided many wrong answers. His verbal responses were standardized on tape, and each protest was coordinated to a particular voltage level on the shock generator. Now, as teacher, you were seated in front of this impressive-looking instrument, the shock generator. Its essential feature is a line of switches that goes from 15 volts to 450 volts and a set of verbal designations that goes from slight shock to moderate shock, strong shock, very strong shock, intense shock, extreme intensity shock, and finally XXX, danger severe shock. Your job, the experimenter explains to you, is a word pair test. If he gets each answer correctly, fine, you move on to the next pair. But if he makes a mistake, you are instructed to give him an electric shock, starting with 15 volts and you increase the shock one step on each error. The fuck is this shit? <clears throat> that is incorrect. This one will be 195 volts. The learner was hidden from the teacher by a partition. Of course, this was all a simulation. Nothing was really happening. But the learner made very convincing sounds of pain as the shocks increased. This will be at 330. <laughs> And Milgram found, surprisingly and rather horrifyingly, that the majority of people would actually go right to the very highest level if there was some pressure from a man in a white coat who said things like... It's absolutely essential that you continue. Continue, please. Go on. In fact, about 65... Not responsible for it, that deferring of responsibility? ...sense of the people who he, was, he studied, who were normal volunteers from the ordinary population, actually gave the max... Oh. What does she say? In fact, about 65% of the 
people who he, was, he studied, who were normal volunteers from the ordinary population, actually gave the maximum number of votes. This man was one of those 65%. This one will be 195 votes. The correct one. Let me out of here. Slow. Dance. Let me out of here. What are you not bothering me? Let me out of here. You have no right to keep me here. Let me out. Let me out of here. Let me out. Continue, please. Let me out of here. Please. 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 Go on. Let me out. Let me out. responsible for it. Red. That is incorrect. This will be at 3.30. The correct phrase is rich Let me out of boy. Here. Let me out of here. My heart's bothering me. Let me out, I tell you. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. You have no right to hold me here. The next phrase is let fast. Me let me out. Let me out. Let me out of here. Let me Bird, out. Bird, car, out. train, plane. Eventually, the learner pretended to be unconscious. Continue, teacher. That is incorrect. This will be 345. The correct answer is fast bird. What we learned from that experiment is that people will actually do an awful lot uh, when they're put under pressure from authority figures. And the problem is, of course, that when we obey the unjust authority figure, the person who gives us immoral commands, then, of course, awful things can go wrong. 65% of Van Perfer Peffers. <clears throat> um, okay, listen, one more time. I'm sorry. I won't go on about this anymore, okay? Listen, everything that I talk about is all tied together, okay? Where's the interstellar music? <laughs> no, but like, really, this is what I'm... Oh, my God. What happened? 99 plus? Oh, shit. Um... This is what I'm talking about when I talk about things like I don't like it when people dehumanize slave owners in the past of um, American history, right? When I tweeted at that person, I was like, I don't think it's a bad question. I don't think you should be dehumanizing people that own slaves because people do a lot of fucked up shit depending on the type of environment they're in, right? It's why, I, and a lot of you fucking righty memers are like, yeah, destiny, you're right now. But it's the same thing about fucking ISIS, right? And it's the same thing about Islamic extremist terrorism, depending on what part of the world you're at. People in certain situations will do really fucked up shit, will do really fucking crazy shit, right? And then it's why Lauren was never able to give me a real answer for why the three million Muslims in the West ha don't commit in the in America don't commit terrorism like all these other Muslims and she kind of struggled around well they're um, they've been assimilated yeah but they're still Muslim so obviously there's something more than the religion that's determining what's going on here right a huge confounding amount of variables that all interact with one another that determine how people act it's not as simple as this is a Catholic this is a Jew this is a Muslim right it's not that simple right look at all the people in Nazi Germany do you think that Nazi Germany was full of evil fucking people that were all just waiting for the opportunity to exterminate millions of people no of course not right. Do you think that the Sunnis in, in North Iraq were all just waiting for the opportunity to take up arms and blow people's fucking heads off with 50 millimeter, you know, mounted machine guns? No, of course not, right? Do you think that the 9-11 bombers, you know, like, like, <clears throat> it behooves you to not understand why people do the things they do because if you're not willing to accept that people human beings that are just like you have the capacity for great evil you will never understand how to counteract it is that's the only argument that i'm trying to make that people for, and i'm not and this isn't even like a like an opinion this is just a fact right that people will act predictably given certain scenarios so your goal as a person should be to limit these scenarios as much as possible right? The scenario is not being Christian or being Muslim, right? The scenario is, you know, whatever is specific to certain groups of people that are causing problems, right? Figure out what that problem is and remedy the problem, right? And don't look for these blanket solutions and don't act like these people are inhuman or somehow fundamentally different than you. They're not fundamentally different. You have more in common with a member of ISIS than you do with a fucking ape, right? These are humans that are acting in very predictable ways. And given the same set of circumstances, you might be right alongside with them there with your fucking C4 wrapped around your body waiting for somebody to push a button and blow you up in some fucking building because you think that it's morally the right thing to do. <sighs> Carl Jung, the psychologist, said that the line between good and evil runs down the center of every individual. So true. Yeah, that might be true, but I think Carl Jung is a loony. Wasn't he like one of the first descendants of Freud? <laughs> Fuck. I don't know, dude. That guy was pretty crazy, but yeah, I mean, it's true. At what point are individual people held responsible for following the influence of their group? I don't know. That's a really, really, really good question.
that's a super amazing question. And I don't know what the answer to that is. Um, but you know, that's a debate that would be awesome to have, right? Is a poor person that um, resorts to robbing a um, store in order to, you know, because he wants some shit, as opposed to a more wealthy person doing it. Should the poor person be held more culpable or less culpable because of life scenario? Is that something you take into account? I don't know. Um, I, that's a, it's an interesting question. I don't know the answer to that. I think that at that point you're in the realm of philosophy for um for 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 figuring that out. I don't I don't know what the correct answer is. I don't know. It's it's really really hard to answer. Yeah, the Nuremberg trials are an interesting trying to hold people responsible for shit going on in Nazi Germany. Like I don't know, dude. That's some crazy fucking shit. Young is different from Freud Destiny. I didn't actually agree with Freud quite a bit. Fuck off. I thought that Young was a little bit crazy in some of the shit that he did. I could be wrong. I don't remember him very well. Thank you for correcting my horrible logic. I've now pledged allegiance to Allah and will bomb all Kafirs. Good job, buddy. <laughs> How much better do you think our society would be if philosophy would be taught in schools? It would be so much better, but nobody would ever be in favor of that. People want philosophy to come from the household and not from the school. So that would never happen, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. 